Adding compression while recording is a great way to get your track sounding more production or mix ready. Plus, if you're live streaming, it'll really give that audio a more polished sound. So today I'm going to show you how to use Focusrite Control to insert a compressor using your Scarlett or Claret interface. Plus, I'll show you how to set it up for zero latency monitoring. Now, before we get into Focusrite Control, let's look at the connections first. And so for demonstration purposes, I have a Focusrite Scarlett 4i4. This again will work with any Focusrite Scarlett or Claret interface that has at least one extra input and output over and above the microphone you're using. It's preferable if you have one like a 4i4 or greater in terms of inputs so you don't have to interfere with monitoring as well because I'm going to show you how to zero latency monitor this as well. But in any case, we'll use the 4i4 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an effects loop through the 4i4. For this example, I've just chosen this Warm Audio WA2A LA2A style compressor. And uh, what we want to do is insert this, of course, as a loop. So for example purposes here, we're going to say we have our microphone coming into the Scarlet, and it doesn't really matter which input it's coming in on yet. We'll get into that in Focusrate Control. But what we want to do is go to the back of the unit, and we want to find a line output. And this one has a number of them. I'm just going to choose one of them here. We'll go with output number three just because it's convenient. So I'm going from output number three on the Scarlet to the input over on the WA2A. So again, balance input, we'll just do that. Now, if you have XLR cables, you can use that as well. The Scarlet's and the Claret's use a TRS, of course, for line connection, so that's what we're gonna use. So now we're going out from the interface into the WA2A. Now we gotta come back out of the WA2A into the Scarlet. So again, I'm just gonna choose the balance line output on the WA2A, and then we'll come back to an unused input. Again, I'm gonna choose number three, so I keep it nice and easy. Three out, all the way back through to three in. And so now I have the hardware connection. That's really all we need to do. Now let's take a look at Focusrite Control. Now, when I showed you how to make the connections with the 4i4, I was using input and output number three. And that again is optional. You can use whatever you like. Just to keep things simple, I like to use the same input and output number. Now for the demonstration in Focusrite Control, I'll be using a Scarlet 18i20. And I have things patched in in my rack using channel seven in and out. So that's what you're gonna see. So now I've opened up Focusrite Control. You'll also see at the bottom of the screen, I've given you a camera shot of the W2A in the rack so you can see when it activates. Now to do this in my setup, I have this patched in using output number seven. And so I've gone ahead and selected output seven. And all I need to do is add my microphone input. Now in this case, the microphone I'm using is coming in on hardware input number three. So I'm gonna choose analog three. And as soon as I do that, you'll see that I'm sending my microphone out over output seven. You'll also see that the meter has began moving on the WA2A at the bottom. So it's getting the signal. And as far as uh, getting the signal out, that's all I need to do to record in from the W2A. So the microphone with the compressed sound, I can set that up in my DAW to record in this case, input number seven. Whichever input and output pair you use will be a little different on your setup. But for me, that's number seven. Now, the other nice thing I can do is I can monitor this in zero latency. So to do that, all I need to do is go to my headphone output. And in this case, I'm using outputs 9 and 10 for headphone output on the Scarlett 18i20. And all I need to do is go in and I'll set up a custom mix here. And I'll choose that hardware input that I want to have. So if I know what number 7, you'll see now I'm getting that audio coming back in. It's going to go out of the headphones. And so I have the raw audio coming in on channel three. And again, that is being pushed out to output number seven. That's going to the WA2A. And then the W2A is coming back in on input number seven, which I am monitoring right now over my headphones. And again, I can pick this up and record it in whatever DAW or an OBS studio if I want. I'll just uh, close out of Focusrite Control and I'll just bring my OBS studio over that I'm recording this with. And you'll see I have input three coming in here right now. But if I go ahead into my, into my selections here, you'll see I have an input number seven. If I activate that, you'll see the audio is now coming back in on input number seven. And so now I actually have the choice of either input three, which is the unprocessed, so it's not going through the WA2A, or I can use input seven, which has the WA2A. In the case of OBS Studio, I can actually record these tracks independently and that way I have, you know, the compressed as well as the uncompressed audio that I can work with later. Sometimes nice if you want to do a recording while you're live streaming. 
course, we can do the same thing in a DAW. Now I'll use Studio One to demonstrate, but you can do this in any DAW. So I'm going to add a track in here and I'm going to call it Microphone Dry. So this is going to be without the WA2A. And all I'm going to do is choose the input number three again, because that's where I know I have my microphone coming in. So if I go OK, I'll just put this, I'll arm it. You'll see that the audio from my microphone is coming through. Now, again, this is just the raw audio, not what's going through the WA2A. If I want that, I'll add another track in here. I'm going to call this Microphone Wet, just so I know what's there. And this time I'm going to go to input number seven. And if I go OK, and again, I'll arm that you'll see that that audio is coming through as well. So here I have both. Again, I'm recording the audio both without and with the WA2A. Of course, you might just want to capture one or the other, but this just shows you that you can, uh, you get a lot of options when you use Focusrite control and you set routing up with effects. Now using an effects loop is just one way you can level up your recordings, live streams, and performances. And if you want to use Focusrite control to get more out of your Scarlett and Claret interface, check out one of these videos on the screen. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.